Assessment of Endocrine System When conducting a focused endocrine assessment on patient, both subjective and objective data are needed. Components may include Chief Compliant Present Health Status Past Health History Current Lifestyle Psychological Status Family History Physical Assessment Communication during the history and physical must be respectful and performed in a culturally sensitive manner. Privacy is vital, and the healthcare professional needs to be aware of posture, body language, and tone of voice while interviewing the patient. Take into consideration that a patient's ethnicity and culture may affect the history that the patient provides. Health History Subjective data It is important to begin by obtaining a thorough history of complaints related to the endocrine system. Elicit information about any complaints of endocrine disease or disorders. Endocrine disease usually manifests as the presence of one or more of the following. Fatigue or lethargy. Weight gain or loss. Dizziness. Feelings of depression, irritability, or anxiety. Pain. Decreased libido. Nausea and vomiting. Changes in urinary or bowel habits. Changes in vision. Intolerance to heat or cold. Change in appetite. Changes in energy level. Changes in weight, fat and fluid distribution. Secondary sexual characteristics. Sexual dysfunction. Memory, concentration, sleep patterns, and mood. Although specific endocrine disorders are often accompanied by specific clinical symptoms, more general manifestations may also occur. The health history should include information regarding the severity of these changes, the length of time the patient has experienced these changes, the way in which these changes have affected the patient's ability to carry out activities of daily living, and the effect of the changes on the patient's self-perception. Specific symptoms of various endocrine disorders are discussed with each disorder. Possible genetics-related issues may also be important. Physical assessment. Physical exam techniques used in a focused endocrine assessment are the same techniques used in a general exam. Inspection. Palpation. Percussion. Auscultation. During inspection, look for conditions that can be observed with eyes. Examples of what to inspect related to endocrine abnormalities are Generalized appearance Skin color Location of lesions Bruises or rashes Symmetry Size of body parts Abnormal sounds or odors Palpation is another physical exam technique that will be used in focused endocrine assessment. During light palpation, Compress the skin about a half inch to third April inch with the pads of fingers. When using deep palpation, use finger pads and compress the skin about one half inches to two inches. Palpation allows to assess for texture, tenderness, temperature, moisture, pulsations, masses, and internal organs. Percussion is used in focused endocrine assessment to allow to elicit tenderness or sounds that point to underlying problems. When percussing directly over suspected areas of tenderness, monitor the patient for signs of discomfort. Examples of endocrine abnormalities that may be percussed are an enlarged pancreas, a pleural effusion associated with specific endocrine abnormalities, or a hormone-secreting tumor. Auscultation is used in focused endocrine assessment. Examples of exam findings that will be auscultated during focused endocrine assessment include murmurs, cardiac irregularities, adventitious breath sounds, alterations in bubble sounds, focused physical examination, changes in physical characteristics such as appearance of facial hair in women, moon face, buffalo hump, exophthalmos, edema, thinning of the skin, obesity of the trunk, thinness of the extremities, increased size of the feet and hands, and edema may signify disorders of the thyroid, adrenal cortex, or pituitary gland. Exophthalmos and other eye symptoms may occur with hyperthyroidism and Graves disease. Alteration in skin texture is associated with hypofunction and hyperfunction of the thyroid gland. 
Elevated blood pressure may occur with hyperfunction of the adrenal cortex or tumor of the adrenal medulla. Decreased blood pressure may occur with hypofunction of the adrenal cortex. Behavioral changes such as agitation, nervousness, a flat effect, or a lack of concern about personal appearance may also be present. Diagnostic Evaluation A variety of diagnostic studies are used to evaluate the endocrine system. The most common tests are discussed in this section. Blood tests are used to determine hormone blood levels. Knowing the serum levels of a specific hormone may provide information about whether there is hypofunction or hyperfunction of the endocrine system and the site of dysfunction. Other blood tests are used to detect autoantibodies or to assess the effect of the hormone on other substances, e.g., the effect of insulin on blood glucose levels. Radioimmunoassay are radioisotope labeled antigen tests used to measure the levels of hormones or other substances. Urine tests may be used to measure the amount of hormones or the end products of hormones excreted by the kidneys. One-time specimens are obtained, or in some disorders 24-hour urine specimens are collected to measure hormones or their metabolites. For example, urinary levels of free catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine, may be measured in patients with suspected tumors of the adrenal medulla, pheochromocytoma. Urine tests have several disadvantages, such as the inability of patients to urinate at scheduled intervals and the effect of some medications or disease states on the test results. Stimulation tests can determine how an endocrine gland responds to the administration of stimulating hormones that are normally produced or released by the hypothalamus or pituitary gland. If the endocrine gland responds to this stimulation, the specific disorder may be in the hypothalamus or pituitary. Failure of the endocrine gland to respond to this stimulation helps identify the problem as being in the endocrine gland itself. Suppression tests may be used to determine whether negative feedback mechanisms that normally control secretion of hormones from the hypothalamus or pituitary gland are intact. They test the effect of administration of an exogenous dose of the hormone on the endogenous secretion of the hormone or on the secretion of stimulation hormones from the hypothalamus or pituitary gland. Imaging studies include radioactive scanning, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, computed tomography, CT, ultrasonography, positron emission tomography, PET, and dual energy X-ray absorptiometry, DEXA. Genetic screening is increasingly becoming more available. DNA testing is expected to lead to the identification of specific genes associated with endocrine disorders, selective targeting for drug development, and increased understanding of the function of the endocrine system. Genetic screening is used to determine the presence of a gene mutation that may predispose an individual to a certain condition. The use of genetic screening must be considered carefully by the physician and patient. So guys, thanks for watching my video. You can like and comment on my video, but don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel to watch quality content like this. Thank you guys.